We have traveled all over East Africa, finding hard-working farmers who are making a good life on their shambas. We want to learn from them, turn their farms into good businesses, and help them increase their profits. Join us and see how our farmers benefit from the experts' advice. And share their experiences as we shape up their shambas. <laughs> Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Uganda, next to Mount Elgon, the oldest volcano in this region. We are here to visit Aaron and Rose, good farmers, making the most of their fertile soils here. Oh, wow, wow, wow. That was a steep climb. Yeah, it was. Good. So, here we are. Hey, Aaron. Oh, nice to see you. <laughs> you almost welcome. How are you? I'm okay. Yes. Ah, good to see you. <laughs> see you coming uh, yeah. How are welcome. you? I'm okay. Very well. well yeah. Yes. yes. Hmm? Good. Now, yes, tell me. How is farming here? You see the dry spells there, but uh, I'm pushing on. That's good. <laughs> so could you show us around your farm? It is okay. Let's go. Ah, okay. Wonderful. All right. Aaron and Rose have lots of crops on their farm. Maize, coffee, cassava, fruit trees, and even climbing yams. Don't forget the cows and the chickens. Let's see what we can do with those cows. Dr. Bert is waiting for us here and he wants to know more about the milk. I have two cows. Susan, mm. it gives uh, 12 of 13. Mm -hmm. And this one gives uh, uh, about five, less than five. Uh, the average is four, four mm. liters. For Susan, the production, I would say, is fair. About 10 liters, 12 liters a day. We expect with her body size, she could, be, she could do more. She can give you more milk. Because she has a bigger capacity, she has a, a bigger body. So Susan should give you more milk. Mm -hmm. As for Mary, uh, not very surprising that you're getting five liters. Because of her body size, I've looked at the udder, the udder is quite small. So what should a farmer do to get more milk, more production from their cows? One, we need a good breed. Number two is the management practices in your farm. What do you do in your farm? Do you give the right feed, the right housing? Is there water? And we have looked at the feeds that he's using, and uh, there are areas of improvement. They require more minerals for maintaining their body condition, for conception, and for reproduction and milk production. Because every day you are milking the cow, you are withdrawing the minerals from her body. You need to replace. Milk is about 85% water. So if we are not giving water to our cows, then you are, you, are, you are losing milk. Aaron feeds his cow napier grass and Kaliandra as fresh feed, which is good for their energy. Kaliandra is a good protein source too, which they need for making milk. What's the ratio? The feeding ratio for Kaliandra. Kaliandra, a dairy cow, milking cow, should get five kilograms a day. Mm -hmm. That will be sufficient protein for your cow. Mm -hmm. okay. And what's the importance of supplements? What protein does in the body of the animal is also improving the quantity and the quality of milk. So you had asked me about whether we can improve milk production. We can improve by ensuring we have a good source of protein. Kaliandra being one, but they are also commercial proteins. An example is Kupakula. It is important to supplement with protein, but you must always give cows mineral supplements. You are using um, the mineral blocks. It would be good to also have the powder minerals. Powder minerals have more minerals than a block. Minerals are important for a cow to give more milk and to come on heat 60 days after calving. They make your dairy business better. How do you feed the supplements to a cow through the various age, ages, like from calving all the way to uh, milking? Now, calves, uh, it's good that they have these mineral blocks. 
the mineral that Aaron is using. When you come to the milking cow, we give a minimum of 200 grams of mineral salt, the maklits, every day. There are two types of maklik powders. Maklik Plus is for heifers and dry cows in calf. Maklik Super is for milking cows. You give the cow as much as she will eat. Or you can measure the salt based on the numbers of liters the cow gives. Follow the instructions of the packet. So one of the benefits you see is that your cow will be healthy. A healthy cow is able to give you milk. Now there'll be extra milk produced. There'll be an assurance that your cow will come on heat 60 days after calving. There'll be no loss, meaning within that year, at the end of 12 months, from the day the cow calves, she'll give you another calf. We are interested in getting these minerals, but you see, our prices in Uganda keeps on increasing every time, now and then. Today you are hearing of the other price, tomorrow it is different. Even in the afternoon it is different, in the morning it is different. How best could this be acquired? I'll refer you to the nearby veterinary shops, which we supply with our products, and where we know there are no fluctuations in prices. I'm sure now you can expect lots of milk. That is it, and I have to practice it. Now that Aaron knows how to feed his cows well, I want to make sure he feeds his soil properly too. Teresa is here, and she wants to show Aaron the problems that she has seen in his beans, his maize, and his vegetables and fruit. We saw some, uh, some deficiencies. Mm -hmm. I think we saw something to do with nitrogen, mm -hmm. magnesium, as well as some um, boron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw those deficiencies that were coming up. Yes. So actually, what can he do about those deficiencies you're talking about? Uh, he can apply fertilizers, mm -hmm. but again, as I said, soil test first, mm -hmm. then you know the type of fertilizers to use. Right. We have specific fertilizers for uh, things like legumes. Mm -hmm. things, uh, a fertilizer called Biofix, which is actually an organic fertilizer, and we combine it together with a product called Pimazao. With that, Pimazao has trace elements, which we have seen deficiencies for. So if you combine that together with the Biofix, then you should be able to get a very strong crop at, at uh, the time of germination, up to a certain stage where it will need foliar. Mm -hmm. Foliars like the boron molybdenum, that will help the beans to be able to form good flowers. Then you'll have more pods than what we saw on the farm. Mm. What's the difference between foliage and these other fertilizers? Mm -hmm. The normal fertilizers, that is the field grade okay. fertilizers, the ones that you find you can actually, you apply at planting mm -hmm. or at top dressing. Those are called field grade fertilizers. But we also have other forms of fertilizers, the ones that you mix and you can or come in the foliar form, that's in the, in the liquid form. So that means that this you can only spray on the leaves. So mm -hmm. they are taken through the leaves. That's why they are called foliar because that's foliage. Mm -hmm. So you apply this. And in most cases, you find that these foliar fertilizers are the ones that have trace elements. Things like magnesium, sulfur, boron. Those are taken by the crop through mm -hmm. the leaves because you only require very little. The ones that are taken by the plants in larger quantities then you need to feed them through the root system and that's why you need to apply them on the soil so that they are able to be mm -hmm. uptaken by the plants through the roots. For Aaron's fruits and vegetable crops, the problem is micronutrients. So he needs to spray foliar fertilizer. The ones for this particular crop, especially the fruits, one would be Fertilida Magical, mm -hmm. which has calcium and magnesium. Mm -hmm. That will assist your fruit to avoid that end root uh, rot that we have observed in there and the softness of the fruit. Mm -hmm. And also we have fatty leader gold, which will assist not only the fruiting vegetables, but also the legumes, even mm -hmm. anything that has flowers, right. to be able to have better flowers and a better uh, fruit in case you're getting fruits like pods or the, or the, uh, the, the brinjols or those uh, to, uh, mm -hmm. small uh, vegetables, vegetables that we have seen. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you lose a lot of your flowers. Mm -hmm. If you apply that one, uh, the fatty leader gold, it has boron and, and molybdenum. Mm -hmm. Boron assists to be able to reduce on the flower portion. To get better yields, Aaron needs to do a soil test. Then use the right fertilizers at planting and top dressing and make sure he does foliar feeding with Mayer's fatty leader product. 
to get better flowering and better fruits and vegetables. Then he'll be able to supply Mbale town with lots of food. So, we've learned about the benefits of using supplements so that you can increase your milk yield. Yes, and we also learned how important it is to have your soil tested so that you can know which fertilizer is best to buy. But you know what? In this shamba, Aaron is a real expert. That's right. So we've asked our farmer to share with us his number one tip in farming. It is very important to keep records. When you keep records, you'll know how much you have put in and uh, you compare with what you have proud out of the investments. And you have to refer to them as the checks, whether you, you are going down or you are improving on uh, income. So Naomi, do you keep records? Of course I keep records so I don't forget to keep appointments. Mm -hmm. Speaking of appointments, we have two very important ones coming up after the break. We are going to save him money using solar lights. And we are going to protect Aaron's cows and his neighbors for life. While we have a break, we are going to get all his neighbors' cows here. If you'd like to receive all our Shamba Shepherd leaflets, SMS the word ALL together with your name and address to 30606. If you'd like to receive just the leaflet for this shamba, SMS the name of the farmer together with your name and address to 30606. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We're in Bale, Uganda with the farmer Aaron Siu. We've improved his dairy management to get more milk. And his soil management to get more crops. But we also want to show him how to save money with solar lights. And we have all the cows from around here ready for vaccination. East Coast fever is a huge problem and kills millions of cattle every year. It's a disease carried by the brown ear tick. We want to protect Aaron's cows and those of his neighbors against ECF. So, when we leave, he doesn't have to worry about his cattle dying. What are the symptoms of ECF? One, there's inappetence. Mm. The temperature is high, mm. over 40 degrees Celsius. Then the, the biggest crew is the swollen leaf nodes around the parotid or the prescapula. Mm -hmm. What's the economic impact of ECF, especially in East Africa? It has led to death of millions of cattle, so we are losing income. Secondly, they spend a lot of money on expensive drugs while treating. Then thirdly, it leads to poor growth there, thereby we lose income in terms of selling adult animals. Mm -hmm. Those are the major impacts. Okay, so now let's speak about prevention being better than cure. Do you advocate for that? Yes, definitely. Why is that? Um, one, when you prevent, you're saving money. Because one, you're not going to lose your animal. So that means you have productivity. Two, the animal will not fall sick, you're not going to lose milk revenue. Uh, thirdly, the country benefits if the numbers are high of animals. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that's prevention. Let's talk about curing. Supposing his cows or a farmer's cows are sick. What's the cost of trying to treat ECF <coughs> as compared to vaccinating? Yes. Currently, the average cost of vaccination is about 20,000. And the least cost of treating an animal with this CF is 100,000 in the Ugandan market. So by looking at only those figures, the cost of treatment is higher than the cost of vaccination. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, what kind of preventative measures do you advocate for farmers to use? One, spraying using the caricides. Two, 
the vaccinate using the, the available vaccine. Then three, do farm fencing. Mm -hmm. let's, let's go to the vaccination. What kind of vaccines do you recommend? Um, we recommend the ECF ITM Muguga cocktail vaccine. That's the only one available on the market. Mm. Uh, th th this vaccine, it comes in a dosage of how many cows? It comes in a dose pack of 40 animals. Mm. So anytime you vaccinate, you have to have 40 cows? Yes. That's a good, that's good, that's good. Well, isn't it lucky that we've got so many cows? I think we might even have more than 40. While I go put the cows in a pen, Dr. Kizito explains to Aaron and his neighbors how the vaccine works and what to expect. First, the vets take the cow's temperatures to make sure they are not sick. Then, the healthy cows and those that are not in calf are put in the crash. They are weighed and injected with the right amount of antibiotic for their weight. Then, they are injected with a vaccine and their ears are tagged to show they are protected against ECF for life. Only trained vets can do this vaccination. So, make sure that the vet who comes to vaccinate your cows is fully trained. Isn't it lucky I surveyed all the farmers before we started and found out how many needed the ECF vaccine? <coughs> ah, there you are Naomi, I've been yes. looking for you, what are you doing? Well, I'm testing one of our farmers. Aha, uh -huh, good. Would you like extra air time? Oh, yes, I would. Mm -hmm. And also take part in a nationwide survey. Survey about what? Well, you can join Geopol. Geop Who is Geopol? Geopol is a company that conducts nationwide surveys mm -hmm. about anything. Right. And you know what? You also get free air time. Free air time? Yeah. Oh, let me start right away. Good. So uh -huh. simply SMS yes. the word join right. to 70555. Uh -huh. Right. And then you'll be registered with Geopol to be uh -huh. part of a national wide survey. Wow. Your voice will be heard now, me. Aaron and his family have no electricity and have only one light. This is making life difficult, and we have a special guest to help him solve this problem. Now, Aaron, could you just tell us, first of all, how you, what kind of problems you'll be having with your lighting? I've been using uh, some electricity some years back, mm -hmm. but the transformer uh, got complications, then it was removed. Right. So, up to now, we are using our small torch. Oh, mm -hmm. what, what, what type of torch is that? Yeah, it is even here. No, oh, this, yeah, okay. this is what I'm using. And how does that work? We have a competition for it. Mm -hmm. You see, we are using it in the kitchen, we are using it in the main house, children are using it to read books. So and when we check it. on animals at night, mm -hmm. at the same time we have to grab it and use it for lighting to check on the animals. Mm -hmm. So it is very funny. Then the other thing is that uh, we have to replace the batteries every fortnight mm -hmm. and they are costly. Mm -hmm. Then the other challenging issue is uh, charging the phone. Mm -hmm. I, I lost even one phone, mm -hmm. so I had to take it somewhere where they charge, and we pay 500 there. 500 mm -hmm. shillings? Shillings, okay. but I, it got lost from there, it was stolen. Wow. And uh, from there we bought another one. And now when there is no power here, I have to foot to, to almost a kilometer to charge from there. When you reach there at the times, they say power is off, leave it here. It can stay there for four days. Then uh, at the times I take to town. Going to town to and fro is 5,000. Wow. And mm -hmm. charging is, is minimal, 500. Mm -hmm. Then the reading. Yeah. Uh, children reading, they find it very hard. Rose also tells me that her daughter stepped on a snake at night because she didn't have a light. This is not very good at all. Now, Immaculate, how can you help? So Aaron, I've listened to all your problems that you have. And I have a solution for you. I've brought for you our home system. And uh, the way this one is going to work, you're able to light up up to two rooms and then we give you a portable lantern, like you see. So mama will be able to move around. You will also be able to move around as the kids sit in the sitting room and do their homework without having to fight for your lantern. This one just uses the sun. Okay. You don't need to charge. You don't need to spend 5,000 to go to town and light it or anything. 
If Aaron spends 20,000 Uganda shillings on batteries every month and 10,000 on going to town and charging his phone, that's 30,000 shillings a month just for a light and his phone. And his family still have to share one light. If he uses a solar home system, he will save 30,000 a month. Money he can use to invest in his farm or his children's school fees. Where are your centers? Like in Uganda, where can we get uh, this product from? There's an outlet in Budaka. There is an outlet in uh, Soroti. Then we, you can find us in Kampala as well. That is where like, we have our major outlets. Mm -hmm. So if you have any queries, you can just call the numbers that you get on that card and then we'll direct you to your nearest outlet. In Kenya or Uganda, you can get the D-Light lights at total petrol stations. How long does it last? They can give you up to five years. Time is running out, so we had better put the solar system up so we can leave the family with light. First, the solar panel is put on the roof. Then, the battery is connected to the panel and hung in the house. The two lights are connected to the battery and the switches are mounted on the walls. Aaron can charge his phone and the portable lantern from the battery. So he never has to buy batteries or go to town to charge his phone again. Yes, so Rose. <laughs> Rose, so did you enjoy the shape up and how is the delight? It's very happy about it. Limitation in the light, but now she has got light and she is very happy about that. How about you, Aaron? How did you find the Shamba Shepa? What mainly did you learn? The agronomic practices which yes. uh, they trained me about and uh, like uh, on livestock, the way how to feed the animals, nutrition, then the breeding, then the way how to feed the calves and this is very important. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing is soil testing. It's very necessary, it's a requirement that I have to test the soil so that I get the better fertilizers for the soil. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So next time we come here, we'll find a change. That is it. Now our work here is done. See you in the next Shamba. You too can learn a lot from Shamba Shape Up by getting in touch with us by using our SMS service or by calling our call center. Are you a farmer like me? <laughs> Do you want to smile all the way to the bank? It's simple. Just get all your answers from I Shamba by just SMSing the word join to 21606 and they will call you any day, any time. Shamba Shape Up is also online. Visit us at shambashapeup.com. Select the episode and click play. You can also visit Shamba Shape Up's Facebook page where you can enter great competitions and also get involved in great, great discussions. Shamba Shape Up is also on Twitter at Shamba Shape Up. Thank you.